Hey guys, welcome back to Rotary Rockets. Today I'm going to take a look at how I cut the slots for my through fins and install the fins. Now when you're dealing with a smaller rocket, surface mount fins may be okay, but when you get into bigger stuff you're going to find that surface mount fins have a really bad habit of ripping off during the launch. So when you get into bigger rockets, you're going to need some type of a through fin that goes through the housing of the rocket body. So, let's take a look at through fin slots and through fin installation. Here I've got a 4 inch piece of cardboard shipping tube that we're using for the rocket body. For convenience, I'm going to cut off a 12 inch long piece from the bottom and I'll work with that just for making the motor mount and the fin assembly. So I measured up 12 inches and then I just made a little line with the Sharpie across there. That way when we glue them back together later on, we'll have them lined up exactly the way that they were before it was cut. So I just took that over to the bandsaw and cut off a 12 inch piece. Next you're going to need a long piece of paper. Now this is just a strip of 11 by 17. That works good here. Or if you want, don't have anything this long, you can just tape together two pieces of paper. It's just important that you have an edge that's nice and straight and that your paper is long enough to go around your tube at least one complete time. So I'm just going to wrap this around the bottom of the tube and get it so that the two sides of the paper here line up nicely. And then I'll just make a mark on the bottom piece just a little bit from the end, probably about an inch from the end, and then on the overlapping piece we'll make a mark right over that. So what we'll have is two marks here and that represents the entire circumference around the tube. So with the ruler we just need to measure the distance between those two lines. We're going to use millimeters just because it's easier to divide those numbers so we don't have to deal with fractions. So this one for the circumference of our 4 inch tube is 333 millimeters between those two lines. So the halfway point is 165 millimeters and then we need to measure halfway between each one of those which would be on this side 82 and a half millimeters as long as we're generally close to that 82 and a half we're fine and then we'll come back here and measure the halfway point between these two again 82 and a half millimeters and that will leave us with five marks on the paper but the first mark and the second mark are actually the same one because they line up when we roll it around so there'll be a total of four points around that paper so now we're going to wrap that paper again around the bottom of our tube and I'm just going to be up from the bottom just a little bit so I have room to mark the tube. You want to wrap that around, make sure it comes around straight and you'll know it's straight if the two pieces of paper line up very nicely and you get all the wrinkles out and pull that around and our two end marks should lay right on top of each other. We'll hold that nice and tight and we'll make a mark on the tube at all four of those locations on the paper. Next we want to extend these lines up this tube. Now I've just got a piece of three quarter inch MDF here with a nice straight edge on it. I'm just going to use that as my straight edge. Now, it's laying flat pretty good on the table. If it has a little bit of a bump to it, which this one does, I'm just going to put a little weight right here and that holds it down nice and flat. Or you could have somebody else push that down for you. And I'm just going to line my mark up with that MDF and just make that mark all the way up. That'll give me a nice straight line and I'll do that for all four of them. Now this is the fin I've designed out on the open rocket program 
and I added a quarter inch deep tab on the inside of the fin and that's also set up just a little bit here from the bottom so the tab doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of the rocket body. So that'll allow me to make a slot from here all the way up to here that the fin and that tab area will slide into. And the reason that the tab is set up about an inch and a half from the bottom is that means that the slot will also be up about an inch and a half from the bottom of the rocket body. And that will keep this area of the rocket body still nice and strong because we won't have a slot that comes all the way down near the bottom and makes that a very weak point. So I've got the fin here lined up with the bottom of the rocket body and we'll just make two marks at the bottom of the tab and at the top of the tab. I'm going to take this over the drill press and we'll do a couple things. First off, we've just got a quarter inch drill bit and we're going to drill a hole right at the bottom mark. That's going to be our pilot hole for this bit. Now this is a side cutting bit. It's sometimes called a roto zip bit, sometimes called an X bit. But it's made for cutting sideways. And this is also a quarter inch diameter. Now the reason we're using quarter inch is because of the thickness of our fin. Now this is quarter inch MDF paneling. Now technically this is actually only 0.22 of an inch. So cutting with the quarter inch bit is going to give us just a little bit of play in there that will make this fit even easier. So I've got the quarter inch drill bit and I'm just going to drill a pilot hole right at the bottom mark. So now we've got the X bit installed or the roto zip bit installed in the drill press and we just want to feed up onto that bit since it cuts on the side we don't want to be way on the bottom we want to be up on that bit a little bit so once we get it up in position we'll just raise the bed up to support the tube in that area and tighten that down in place now I've got a sample piece right here because I wanted to show you what this bit does uh, if you're not careful and don't follow the line very well or not holding on very well to the material. It is very violent so you need to hold on very tight and guide it very carefully as you go. Now I've got gloves on, I've got safety goggles on as well. Now I am going to be holding it inside so Watch where your thumbs are going because that bit is hanging down in the middle as well. So this is just a sample piece and I'll just show you how it can get out of control a little bit if you're not careful. So the drill bit wants to walk in one particular direction. And you see here it wants to walk to the right. So I'm always going to be constantly kind of rotating and pushing this way so that I'm fighting that force of the way that it wants to cut. And we're also not going to be pushing very fast like I was and trying to go very quickly because it's just going to kick you out to the side if you try to do that. So we're trying to keep the piece from rotating and we're cutting along our line nice and slow with just some gentle forward pressure. So here's the actual piece of cardboard tube that we're going to be cutting for the fins. Again we'll go up on the bit a little bit, bring our table up to hold us into a position where we'll be able to cut on the side of the bit and we'll start up and we're going to cut all the way up until we meet the second mark line. I'm just going to go a little bit past that mark just so we have a little play to work with and the fin won't be um, unusually tight.
Now most of that was really me just guiding it along gently and not pushing and letting the drill bit do the work that it wanted to do. So don't force that and let the bit do all the work. And here we've got the fin and that tab fits nicely into that slot. Now if you've got some uneven areas and your fin just doesn't fit in very good because of some bumps and ridges in there, you can either sand them or file them to get them down until you can get the fin to fit in very nicely. Now you see on the inside of the tube that cutting bit left a real mess of cardboard on the inside. So since we are going to be doing some backer pieces on these fins that are going to sit against the body tube, we don't want that mess in there. So I'm going to go ahead and take some really rough sandpaper, um, usually something around 60 grit um, is what you're going to need to take that down. I'll go ahead and sand that off. So just a few minutes of sanding and you'll get that nice and smooth on the inside. Now there's a couple of different ways to install through fins. One common technique is if you have a smaller tube that's going to be going into the rocket body, typically this would be the motor mount where the motor would slide up into that tube, then the tab on the fin will be longer so that it goes through the body and then gets glued to that inner tube. And so the tab would be significantly longer than the tab that I've got here. Now we're not going to do that style. Our fin is going to sit into the body and we've made the tab just a little bit longer so that it sticks through the body about a quarter of an inch. So what we've done is cut out some pieces of half inch MDF and this is just a half inch by half inch. And then we use the router table with a quarter inch router bit and cut a slot down that and made some of this slotted material. So this will go on the inside and it'll get glued on to the back of that tab that's inside of the rocket body like that. Now if you have a short fin, something like that, you could use the whole piece from the bottom of the tab to the top. Since this is unusually long of a fin, I really don't need that entire piece inside the rocket body. It's just some extra mass that we don't need. So I'm going to cut about an inch and a half piece that goes down on the bottom and another inch and a half piece that's going to go up on the top. So regardless of what style fin you're going to do, you need to get all your slots done and cleaned up and make sure that your fins fit well into all the slots before you start gluing any of them. Now I've cut these two little backer pieces that I'm going to glue in place. Now for this fin, I can push it in and slide it up and I'll be able to glue this one and get it flush with the top. I'm just going to use some wood glue to glue that in place. And then from the other side, it's not quite as easy because it's in just a little bit, but I'll glue that in on the bottom of the tab there and get it flush with the bottom of the tab. So we'll just get those both glued in with the wood glue and we want to make sure that we don't have a lot of excess wood glue just oozing out around here because we need to pull these tight so that the backer pieces will rest against the edge of the cardboard on the inside. So we don't want a lot of excess glue just oozing out all around that area. So we'll get them glued in and clean them off a little bit and let that glue dry for about 20 minutes. Now I used wood glue because it works very well with MDF. It's a very porous material. You could also use a five minute epoxy if you wanted this to set up a little bit faster and that would work fine too. So I've got the top piece on and the bottom piece on. Normally on wood glue projects you would want to clamp your pieces together but because of the way this is inside the tube that's just not very feasible at this point. So just make sure that there's enough glue in there to fill the gaps between the pieces get everything flush the way I want and push down nicely and we'll just let that dry for a little while. Now that I've got the backer pieces glued to the back of all the fins that are installed, I'll glue the fins in place just by putting little dabs of glue on the back of each one of those backer pieces and then pulling the fins into place. Once I get them all in position, I use my fin alignment tool 
just to get everything all aligned and let that glue dry. Now that the fins are all glued in place, there's two more parts I want to add to this, not only just to strengthen the area, but also to keep the fins from being wobbly, because they are a little bit wobbly back and forth at this point, because each fin is on its own. They're not bound together in any way. So any force that acts on that fin is going to make it go side to side a little bit, and that's not good. So the two things we're going to add are these two retaining rings. And one is going to get glued in on the bottom, and it'll get glued against all four of those fins and backers. And the other one goes in on the top and gets glued down to the fins and backers in that area. Now these rings are just quarter inch MDF. It's the same material as the fins. And the outer diameter has been cut to fit very nicely just into the body tube. But before you install these, you need to account for a couple things. First of all, you need to account for how you're going to do a motor stop, how your motor is retained, and how your motor is centered. And you need to take into those items into consideration before you put these end caps on, because once you put them both on, it's going to be difficult or impossible to put something else in the center here if you need to hold your motor in place. So just as an example, let me show you using this motor here. Now the ring internal diameter here that I cut fits onto that top cap piece as well as this bottom cap piece on the bottom of the motor. So for this one, that piece is going to go in the bottom and that's going to be used as part of my motor centering assembly. So it centers that motor up. So I don't have to do anything there other than just glue that ring in place. For the top one though, the motor isn't tall enough to reach all the way up and go into the top centering ring. So because of that, I'm going to have to use another ring that again fits on that, but this is going to be down further around this area here so that the motor can fit up into that. So it's important that this gets installed before I cap both ends of this, otherwise you won't be able to get this in. So this one has some notches that have been cut out in it so that that allows it to slip down over those little pieces uh, on the back sides of the fin and then we'll just determine where that needs to go and glue that in place. It'll get glued around to the cardboard and also glued to the fins uh, using a five minute epoxy. So once you have everything inside that needs to be finished all done and glued in place then you can go ahead and glue that cap piece onto the top of the backer pieces and this piece down into the bottom on those backer pieces. Now I'm not going to use wood glue to glue these in place. I'm going to use a five minute epoxy. And the reason for that is the five minute epoxy has a little bit more body to it and it can fill gaps a little bit better. And the reason I may need to fill a gap is even though everything was measured and fitted very well, the tops of all these four backer pieces may not be exactly the same. So I'll put some epoxy on the tops of each one of those. I'll put some epoxy around the cardboard just at that same area. And then a little bit of epoxy on the four points where I'm going to make contact on this ring. And glue that down and let that set up. And then if there is any gap between one or two of those backer pieces and fins, that epoxy will just take care of filling that gap and strengthening that area. And the same thing applies for the bottom piece as well. So once those are glued in and that glue is dry, the four fins will be much more rigid because each one will be bound to each other as well as the whole assembly is going to be bound to the cardboard tube, both at the bottom and at the top of the fins. Then the last thing to do on this assembly is just install the fillets. And that's just a matter of mixing up some five minute epoxy and running some beads down the edge of the fin where the fin meets the cardboard tube. You'll only be able to do just this one side here and then you'll have to let that glue set up for about 15 or 20 minutes and then you can rotate and do the next one and so on and so forth until all the fillets are completely done and set up. 
And that's my finished fin assembly. The only thing left here is to use a small cardboard coupling and glue that in place there and glue it back onto the rest of the body tube and finish the rest of the rocket. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.